everybody. So today I thought I would start with uh, a bit of an exercise that I do when I look at images and try and come up with foreground and background elements to make the image more finished. So in this situation here, I have a photo of Cecilia. I finished using a uh, DAL technique that I have uh, posted in previous videos for speed edits, and I'll post a link down below to a tutorial I also did. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to finish this image, and uh, I want to put some petals kind of falling around her. So I've decided to go with uh, red rose petals just because I think it'll be interesting, easy to do, and I have the assets to do it, uh, which is probably the, the most important part of that. Uh, so uh, what I like to do is either start with the foreground or the background. So um, to prep for this, one of the things I like to have is I like to have a channel that contains a, um, a cutout of the subject. So it's basically her using the um, quick selection tool up here. And I just went around her and then did a refine edge. So nothing fancy it took me a few minutes to do. And then what you do is you do select, save selection. And I call mine one, just the way that I do it. And then when you want it, it's over here under channels and you can just control click on it here. Or if you'd like to, you can go up to select load selection and then pick it from here, which is painful and lots of clicking. So I much prefer to just go to channels because I usually have a few different channel masks created and they're there and available. So to move forward, what I need to do is bring in some petals. So um, I have some assets here in bridge, which is off screen. I'm just gonna drag in one of the layers and it's uh, simply some rose petals that are out of focus. They're small and uh, they're in the background. They're gonna be what's, what's behind her, obviously. And uh, I can stretch this out and make it bigger, but I think I'm just gonna leave it kind of like halfway, um, something like that and just accept it. And then uh, I'm going to duplicate that layer a couple times, uh, four times specifically, and I'm just going to move some of the copies around a bit to complete more of the background. And maybe I use a Control T there to uh, translate it, just so it's a little different. And then um, move this one down here, just so they look a little different. I don't want everyone to think that I just copied it. They should be a little more interesting than that. And I'm seeing one there is. So I knew I had four of them. All right, so something along those lines, and those are all good enough. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to merge them. You can right click and um, merge layers, or uh, Control E also works. Merge down, same idea. And these are good to go. Now, they're uh, in some cases they're a bit sharper than I might want them. Mm, no, this one looks okay. Uh, so I, I guess I'm okay with that, but I want to show you how to deal with that in a moment. Now, you notice some of these go uh, in front of her body, and they're supposed to be behind her. So we need to fix that, and the way to do that is to go to Channels, Control-click on your mask, or as we discussed earlier, go to Select and, and grab it. And then you're just going to hold on your Alt key and click on the Mask tool. And that will create a mask using the current marquee, and uh, so this is the mask we just applied. And boom, so now we don't have to worry about the leaves being in front of her. And we're not going to worry about the color of the leaves right now. Uh, I'm not so worried about that. And we're going to call this background. Um, spelled right. And then I'm going to grab another set of leaves. And I'm just kind of looking at my... I have literally thousands of different types of backgrounds like this. I'm just kind of picking through the morass of them here. And let's do this one. Yeah, I like this one. So we want to have foreground and middle ground elements. Now, uh, with the new version of uh, Photoshop, it no longer defaults to uh, a, an unconstrained stretch. It's a constrained stretch now. So you have to hold down Shift to get it to unconstrained stretch. And uh, I'm going to do that because I want to make sure I, I fit it right in the corner there and hit Enter. Obviously, this is in her face too, but we're going to use a little bit different method here because I don't necessarily want it to be perfect over her body. I, I may want to overlap some. So I'm just going to create the mask by clicking the mask icon. Then I'll create the mask. B for brush. And I'm using my uh, Alt right click uh, and moving the mouse side to side or up and down to make the brush harder and softer. On a Mac, it's uh, Command Alt left click, I believe. And I'm going to use 100% flow. And I'm basically just going to paint black in the mask. This is what we're painting to cover up the petals that maybe I don't want over her body. Uh, like this one's a bit distracting and large. These are fine. 
Um, this one over her head is obviously got to go. And then this kind of super blurry one that's up there, we're going to get rid of that. Um, and you're obviously you're calling what you want to erase or keep here, but um, I'm just giving you some tools and you can decide how to use them. So then this looks pretty good. Now this has satisfied a couple things for me. It satisfied the middle ground where the petals kind of are in plane with her and those should be in focus. And then I have some that are in front of the camera and those are the ones that are very large and super blurry. So this kind of represents that. I could add a couple more, let's say something along the lines of this just for demonstration, let's do one more. So again, unconstrained stretch. I'm gonna add a mask and you know what? Um, I don't mind that. Which is, well, they're too sharp. So let's talk about that. Now this comes in as a smart object. I can double click on it and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and um, I'm just gonna blur a bunch and save it. And it'll take us back to the document as a smart object and they'll be blurry. The reason they would be blurry is because they're obviously not in plane with the model. So they would be out of focus. And this is, I think a big problem a lot of people have when adding textures to images like the texture here, for example, has been blurred because it is behind her. And when I brought it in, it was sharp, but it doesn't make sense for it to be that sharp if it's that far behind her. Uh, same with these petals in front, they should not be sharp. Now you can agree or disagree with the composition here, but I'm obviously giving you a, a tool set. Uh, so let's rename these. This is a foreground. And this is the middle ground. Okay, so I want to take all these and we'll put them in one folder and we're going to call this petals. Now, I need to match the color of these, but these are all from the same set of images that were shot for petals. So in order to resolve this, it's actually fairly easy. I just need one human saturation. I'm going to move it outside the group and I'm going to use my, I'm going to hold down alt and click on the line between the two. You can also use this button here. Um, and that will pin it to this entire group. So now any corrections we make here apply to everything inside of it. This is a very quick and time saving way to do things when you have a lot of operations to perform on a group of layers. Now, if I were using the same mask, for example, if, if there were many layers here that were involving not passing in front of her body, for example, I would group those and apply this layer mask to that group because each one of these masks counts as an image uh, for the size of the document. We're already at 1.2 gig here for this image. So each time we add a mask, we are adding a lot more data. And if we're using the exact same mask, there's no reason not to pin it to the group and mask the group. That's what this, this here is for. This is the group mask. And I could certainly use that in other ways. So I'm gonna do is double click on my hue and saturation layer here and now go to work on the leaves. So the leaves, I'm just going to subjectively guess here because uh, there's ways to do this, but that's not the goal of the, uh, the video. I'm just going to drop the saturation a bit and I'm going to make them a bit darker just because I want them to kind of look like they belong here. And I could obviously mess with the hue of them, but um, I find the hue is, is pretty close to where I want it to be. And I don't want this to be exactly the same as her dress, um, but I do want it to look like it's part of the, of the scene, you know, that it makes sense compositionally. And there we go. I think that looks decent. Um, it is a bit, you know, messy and, and what have you because of the, the amount of leaves I have here. But I did want to demonstrate how this technique works and how it all comes together. So there you go. Just something I do to a lot of my images to create a bit of more interest by creating a background, a middle ground, and a foreground element. It could be grass, it could be leaves, it could be anything, piece of architecture. Obviously, photographically, if you're astute and take the time, you can construct your set and compose your photo in camera so that when you take the shot, you have background and middle and foreground. But this was shot against a white wall in my studio and I've obviously taken it to add texture and make it more interesting. So I just wanted to kind of drop this video here and uh, give you this little tip because I just finished this image. This Cecilia's getting married tomorrow. So I thought I would drop her a little gift and uh, wish her luck. So take care and I'll catch you next time.